Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson. And we're continuing our study of First Peter, and we're in chapter two. We're going to read verses one through three. I hope we're going to see not only is is First Peter the themes of First Peter consistently emphasized throughout. He it's just really woven together these themes, um, um, like 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 braiding um, a rope you know, and making it strong. But it's also true between first and second Peter. And 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 almost everything that I've already mentioned is a theme. I've mentioned that it's meant that is that it, that it is a theme in Second Peter as well. We're gonna see that again today. Let's read chapter two verses one through three. Therefore, putting aside all malice and all falsehood and hypocrisy and envy and all slander, like newborn babes, long for the pure milk of the word, that by it you may grow in respect to salvation, if you have tasted the kindness of the Lord. There's so much here in just in these three verses. There's a therefore. Therefore, based on what? Therefore, based on what? What has he just talked to us about? He's talked to us about the fact that, A, we're here to love, and that, B, uh, life is short and the world is temporary. If these two things are true, then our first task is to put aside, and then he, he's got a laundry list of just, you know, bad uh, relationships between people, bad, bad, um, bad practice, I should say, malice, just bad feeling, you know, just ill will that we have for anybody. You've got to get rid of this, putting it aside. It reminds me of laying aside the weight that, that, that holds us back, the sin that easily besets us in Hebrews chapter 12. I mean, Peter just connects to everything else written in the New Testament and the Old, putting aside all malice, all ill will, all guile, falsehood, lying, deception, hypocrisy. That's just another form of deception, isn't it? It's being on the out, pretending to be on the outside who we are not on the inside. Envy, thou shalt not covet, you know? I mean, when you, when you are envious of someone, uh, it is as much a dissatisfaction with God or even more so than anything. Because who is the giver of good gifts but God? James chapter one, every good and perfect gift is from above. And, and, and why do we have ill will with each other? Because oftentimes because someone has something or has a role to play that we want for ourselves. And all slander, all slander, that which is uh, aggressive and that which is passive aggressive, that which is spoken to your face and that which is spoken behind your back, all of it, it's all got to go. And like newborn babes, we, we talked in chapter one, he's, he's, he called us like, he said, called us children, Paideia in chapter one, now he's calling us babies. Um, we have to be like babies. You know, in, in chapter one, verse 13, he said, you gotta be grownups. You gotta gird your mind for action. Then he said, like obedient children, and now like newborn babes. Um, we can't obey if we don't know, if we don't know the word. Like newborn babes long for the pure milk of the word that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. We need to feed so that on the word. We need the nourishment of the word so that we can continue to grow. It reminds me of the apostle uh, Paul uh, talking about milk and, and meat, you know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And, and then the whole notion of growth connecting with what he says at the beginning in chapter 1 of 2 Peter. Add to your faith virtue, virtue, knowledge, knowledge, self-control, self-control, patience, brotherly kindness, love. You know, we have we have maturity to 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 yield to, to participate in, to accomplish. Um, and so we have to have nutrition and the nutrition is the word itself. And then playing on the metaphor of feeding and literally of breastfeeding. Um, if, if you have tasted the kindness of the Lord, um, who provides us with the sincere milk? God does. It's 
God's goodness. God's the one who loves us first. God is the one who birthed us through the blood of Jesus Christ. God is the one who is our parent. And God, God is our parent. And, and, and God is the one feeding us. And if you don't like the image of breastfeeding and you want to think of bottle feeding, that's fine. I, I, but this is the image he's using. The metaphor that he's using here is that we're being cradled by God <clears throat> or being fed by God. And, it, and, it, and if, if, if we taste that it is good, we have to receive the nutrition of the word itself. Because this is, this is the milk. This is the sincere milk. It's the word itself that God is giving us. This is the thing that feeds us, that allows us to grow. Okay. Um, there's more, and it's all connected, and we'll pick up with verse 4 next time. Thank you so much uh, for joining me for another five good minutes with the word.